Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. We're in our West Coast headquarters here in the city of Buena Park, which means good park. And uh, we welcome you, and we'll be giving out some phone numbers in just a moment uh, if you would like to call in and be a part of the show. But I called, I sort of primed the pump, I called a friend of mine down in Texas that is a godly man, and I wanted him to come on and share with us today. And we're going to be talking today about some of the things that God is doing. Many of you saw an email that I put out, and the title of it is Scheduling by the Holy Spirit to Help Us and His People Implement Second Chronicles 7.14. The first step was yesterday when we held a panel discussion on a subject called American Resurrection, a Christian Initiative, by uh, our dear friend who wrote the book AR2, American Revolution, and that's Lawrence Hebron, and we talked about what we can do to implement Second Chronicles 7.14. And then the second thing on our schedule that I believe God put on there is the schedule that we're going to talk about today, and that is boots on the ground, prayer in the air, Israeli style in Israel, on location, March the 16th through the 22nd. And it is my privilege not to have to be prayer in the air, but to literally be boots on the ground. Monday, I will be flying to Tel Aviv and eventually end up in Israel on location with an organization called A Line in the Sand, Israel 2015. One of the facilitators, one of the men of God that's been used of God to lead us in this is my good friend and a regular on this show, Alan Parker with the Texas Justice Foundation. Good morning, Mr. Parker. How are you? Well, we received, and many others received, a press release, and I want to use that sort of our jumping-off spot, and that press release gave out the media contacts and the names, and we give those names out not just to reveal them, but simply to let you know how to pray. There's a Carolyn Hyde, a Maggie uh, Gazworski, and David Andrade, who is also a regular on this program and a spirit-filled, godly prayer warrior with the Congressional Prayer Conference, as you are. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, as many of you know, I talk about the fact that we started the Congressional Prayer Conference back in the year 2000, and it was started right there in Dick Simmons' apartment there on Capitol Hill on 2nd Street. And the way it got started, and I'll just tell you how the Holy Ghost led, I'd been in D.C. all week, concerned over our nation, praying over our nation. And I was on my way back to the airport, but I had a couple of hours. And so I went by my friend's house, Dick Simmons. And as I walked in the front door, I said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. And uh, he and Alan Parker and Clayton Trotter uh, were on the telephone praying with some folk. And they said, yeah, come on in, come on in, sit down. So they sat down. Well, anyway, I eavesdropped on their prayer meeting, talked with them about the possibility of a congressional prayer conference prayer call later, and that was the genesis by, I believe, the Holy Spirit in my life through those men and from the Holy Spirit to start what has now been going on since the year 2000. Brother Alan Parker is very instrumental in it, starting it and continuing it, but Brother Alan Parker is also an attorney and uh, does a great deal of work in pro-life and so forth. But Alan, fill us in on what is going on uh, on this boots on the ground, prayer in the air on uh, March 16th through 22. Well, thank you very much, Wiley. It is amazing what God is doing for the whole world. It's March 20th, coming up Friday of next week, is an amazing day in world history. Not just for the nation of Israel, so I think 
think it will be focused in Jerusalem, but for the whole world. And uh, on the 20th, there will be a partial solar eclipse over Jerusalem, which is the reason we're going to be in Jerusalem that day. But I just learned yesterday even more interesting information about this amazing day. Because it is not only March 20th, there, this solar eclipse, which is visible partially in Jerusalem, it is a total solar eclipse over the North Pole for two minutes on that day. And it is, this only occurs once every hundred thousand years, according to the NASA calendar. And uh, if you don't think the Earth is 100,000 years, then you can say this has never happened before. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's just a unique series of assumptions, and we're having a solemn assembly before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Because we believe based on the signs in the heavens and the signs of the time, as the men of Ithacar understood the times, we believe that all of the signs, important and prophetic things show that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. We don't know the dates. We're not saying it's happening on March 20th. You know. No one knows the hour, but you can kind of know the season. You can tell that spring is coming when certain things happen. You can tell that winter is coming. And I believe we can see the sign that God is getting ready to return to the earth in the form of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, the King of Kings. And uh, so not only is there a partial eclipse in Jerusalem, a total eclipse over the North Pole, which, by the way, is at the top of the earth, and it's international space. No one owns the North Pole. But we believe it's the symbol of the glory of God covering the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. Because in the book of Joel, it says, Before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the sun will be darkened and the moons will turn blood red. Yes. Well, we're in the middle of a four blood red moon tetra. Where the lunar eclipses have been blood red on Jewish high feet. On Passover last year in April 2014, in Sukkot, the Feast of Booth, in September 2014, there were two blood red moons. And then March 20th is also Nisan 1 on the Hebrew calendar. And Nisan 1 is the beginning of the Jewish New Year, according to the religious feast. Mm, God said, in the feast, in the month of Nisan, the first month of the year, you will celebrate the Passover on uh, either the 14th or the 15th day. I can't remember exactly what it is. It's around two weeks in. And that's why Nisan 1, so there'll be a solar eclipse on Nisan 1 on uh Total of the North Pole, and it's the vernal equinox, March 21 is the day of spring. So this is the beginning of the first day of spring. And it's like sunrise for the Earth. Mm. And all of this is happening on the same day. And uh, then later this year, there'll be two more blood moons on Passover this year, which is three days before Easter. Uh, There'll be a blood red moon, a lunar eclipse that literally turns to the moon a pale blood reddish orange. Mm. And then it's to coat the feet of tabernacles. Uh, the last time that happened totally with the solar eclipse was 1493, when the Jews were expelled from Europe mm. by the Spaniards. And we're going partially to Israel to repent for the sins of Christians to the Jews, or people who acted in the name of Christianity against the Jews. Yes. Uh, Paul says we should never be uh, mad at the Jews. We should be grieving that they haven't received their Messiah yet. But they're not any more Christ killers than we are Christ killers. All of us, in our sin, put Jesus on the cross. The Romans, representing the Gentiles, gave the order. So the Jews and the Gentiles 
and every single sinner in the world, which is Parliament, put Jesus on the cross. We're responsible for his death because God said that's the only way that we can overcome their sin and let them have eternal life with us. Amen. It's amazing. Amazing the things that God is bringing together. I certainly wanted to go to Jerusalem, as anybody would who loves the Lord, obviously. It was more than 26 years ago when I was in Jerusalem the last time. And the reason I was there was out of curiosity. This is going to be a very special trip for me because as many of you that have heard my personal testimony, you know that I spent almost 10 years backslidden and away from the Lord. I went into the secular field, I went into a, a secular job, and literally got very, very backslidden, and I'll not go into that detail, but simply to say that 26 years ago, I was on my way back from Tel Aviv to New York. My plane was delayed, and so they said, it's not only an hour delay, it's going to be delayed until tomorrow. So... Here I was, a backslidden Christian in Tel Aviv with nothing to do. And I thought, well, because I'm, quote, a Christian, I probably ought to try to go to Jerusalem. So I rented a car and uh, drove to Jerusalem and went there. And God dealt with me very firmly and very succinctly and warned me that I must repent and come back to my family. And I visited Jerusalem on that day. That was step number one in my recovery, spiritually speaking. Step number two was as I left there later and went to London, I landed in London the very day that the Iranian embassy had been taken over. And uh, I had been there in that embassy just hours before it was taken over. And God dealt with me in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and basically said to me, Wiley, if you don't get your act together, I'm going to kill you. And uh, I heard that very audibly, very clearly. And I said, Lord, I don't want to die. I will be faithful. I'll come back. Well, that was when the embassy was taken over. And uh, I did come back, and I've been back ever since serving the Lord. And so this is going to be a very significant trip for me because it was a turning point of God giving me literally an ultimatum. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to being, my, being with my brother, Alan Parker. We will be there at level P1, Kalal Building, 97 Jaffa Road, Jerusalem, Israel, on March the 20th at 8.30 a.m. in the morning. Now, if you want to back that up here in California, you'll have to back that up about nine hours. And uh, But uh, you can figure out the time zone. Just go to Google and put in time in Jerusalem, and they'll tell you exactly what time it is there uh, right now. It is 6 o'clock in the afternoon there now. But we're going to be praying. We're going to be repenting. I'm going to be repenting as a citizen of the United States. And I'm going to be rejoicing that God caused me to personally repent before and brought me back into the kingdom's work. Mr. Parker, what else is going to be happening while we're there? Well, it's very interesting that just a day or two ago, we got an invitation from a Jewish religious leader who's an Orthodox religious leader, not a Christian, but he loves Christians, and he has a ministry called uh, root source, and he loves to explain Judaism to Christians, that he's happy with Christians. Well, he's calling on Jews to join us at the Wailing Wall, which is the western wall of the Temple Mount, at 12 AC Jerusalem time, for a prayer uniting the whole world for two minutes, 12 AC Jerusalem time, on March 20th. Because that's the two minutes that the sun will be totally darkened over the North Pole and over the whole Earth, in a way. 
Now is that twelve is is that twelve noon there in Jerusalem? Twelve eighteen, yes. Right at eighteen minutes after noon. Yes. Okay. Twelve eighteen PM and in Jerusalem time, yes. Noon right after noon, eighteen minutes after noon, Jerusalem time. And we may we're looking into getting it live West Street. And so we'll be playing with Jewish believers. And what's really also interesting about it, right beside the Western Wall, and most people have probably seen pictures of the Jews in Hasidic clothing, leaning against the wall and praying, and they call it the Wailing Wall. That, that's really just the foundation of the temple. Jesus prophesied before he died that no stone would be left standing of the temple. And 70 years later, well, 30 or 40 years, in 70 AD, the Romans fulfilled that prophecy and tore down the temple. What's actually left is the retaining, the, the retaining wall of the foundation. So the temple was above that. That's not even really, quote, part of the temple, but it's the Wailing Wall. On the south side, we're also going to be going through there a bit because that's where the road is that Jesus walked on mm. himself Amen. to go up to the temple. Amen. And there's a place where the shofar is to be blown, where the southern wall and the western wall come together. Amen. So we as Christians are going to be on the southern side, the way the Jews on the west side, then we're going to join together there at the southwest corner, praying as Christians and Jews to the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Joseph. Amen. For God and the knowledge of God to cover the earth as the waters are coming to the sea. At a time of repentance and crying out to God. Amen. People need to read the book of Joel. That's a really important book Amen. for the last days. Yes, it is. And uh, Mr. Parker, that uh, 12, 18 noontime hour, that's on the 20th? Yes, on, on Jerusalem time, March 20th. That's when it acts up from 12.18 to 12.20 is when it's the full solar eclipse that day. Amen. In Jerusalem on 12.18 to 12.20. Amen. Well, we will have our Congressional Prayer Conference line open here in the United States at that time, that 12.18 p.m. Jerusalem time uh, in the middle of the day, uh, and we'll be having our prayer in the air all over the nation and all over the world. Uh, Mr. Parker, thank you so much for sharing with us. Anything else that you'd like to share, ladies and gentlemen, we are announcing this because we're going to be boots on the ground, and we're going to be boots on the ground there the 16th through the 22nd. It will be my privilege as a pastor, a messianic pastor, to blow the shofar. I'm taking my shofar with me, and we will be blowing the shofar there uh, with the other shofar blowers and proclaiming Almighty God and our repentance and our willingness to work with all people to introduce them to Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we just ask for your blessing on that day as a message to the whole world, I ask you to bless Pastor Hagee on March 23rd. He's having a one-day showing. It's three days after March 20th. But there's a uh, four Blood Red Moon documentary, which is going to be in movie theaters across the country, Lord. Because this is a season of time. And it's Amen. incredibly critical. And Father, March 17th, the day we arrive, it's the day of the Israeli election, which decides who the next prime minister of Israel is. Will they be someone who is willing to go to war with the land to prevent nuclear weapons, or will they sign the, pre the peace treaty that is prophesied in the book of Daniel that promises seven years of peace and provides betrayal and disaster? Yes, yes. And that's the choice the Israeli people are faced with, Lord. There are those who want to appease the enemies of God and those who want to follow God. So yes. It's just like America, Lord. It's coming down, it's black or white. 
You're either on God's side or Antichrist's side. Christ or Antichrist. And I choose for me and my house to be on God's side. Amen. Son, Jesus Christ. And if you're clinging to the world, then everything you have is going to be shaken. I believe September or October of this year, we're going to see another severe judgment on America. That would be seven years after the 2008 disaster mm -hmm. and 14 years after 9-11. And we, I have not seen widespread American repentance that would prevent that judgment occurring. Now, only God knows. It's not up to me to see it. Maybe there are enough people crying out to God. But generally, it should be enough to be seen if people are really crying out. I know there's more praying than there's ever prayed. Amen. Are you still there? Well, I believe we lost Mr. Parker. If he calls back, we'll certainly be able to receive his call. Are other callers on the line with us? Uh, Louis, Charles, Louis Charles is here. Mr. Charles, uh, welcome to the prayer line. And uh, what would you share with us? Uh, well, I would think that the best thing to do is bring up the fact that I was in Pensacola uh, first time a month, two month days ago, and I was invited down there by Coach Dave Oppenmeyer. So I like to think I work pretty close with his ministry, from a, even though I'm not physically near Columbus, Ohio. I'm, I'm in Washington County, Florida, which is about 120 miles away from Pensacola. So he put out a call to me and asked me to go down and see what was going on with that COVID and that trial. And I met him there. He was there uh, that first Monday with uh, Entourage uh, from Columbus. Uh, and it didn't seem like there was that much crowd. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yeah, it didn't seem like uh, two Mondays ago there was that much crowd. He had some people preaching in the street, and then there was about five people, I think, who went up in the jury well, during the jury selection, and they stayed there all the way through Friday. Well, apparently the heat went up. And there was a lot of confusion. So Mr. Ruby Davis, who was, do, who was doing his, uh, you know, he does a five or ten minute YouTube radio presentation that he puts on sporadically as ever as something comes up. And the coach came caught wind of that, and he mailed it to me and said, "Man, you got to get back there on Monday. It's not Berkeley." And, and I kind of was really skeptical, and I said, "Oh, come on, this is all hype." Mm -hmm. So I. I uh, got in touch with Rudy, and then we texted back and forth, and then I talked to him. I talked to his wife, because you could he forwards the phone to, to his wife, and she was giving me a well, that felt was an honest report. It wasn't, it wasn't filled with hype. And between Coach and Rudy and, and his wife's uh, exhortations, I, I said, you know what, I'm only, again, 120 miles away. What's the big deal? I'll go for a day. Mm -hmm. And you could just see the momentum building. He was right. So I decided to stay Monday night. And there was about 10 people in the courtroom and, uh, on Monday. And the kid testified on uh, Monday. He was about 10 minutes before the court. The court. So he started his testimony. So he, he got people excited. Those who were there. Amen. So I guess he, already, he got out of the network. And, and the next thing you know, on Tuesday, we had a Really, it looked like about three people in the courtroom, and there were some people outside too. So it was growing, and it was a result of each time the courtroom broke. But in the end, even Rudy was putting out these, these videos, and it was starting to catch fire. So you could tell that really, really affected Kent. He got some encouragement. Amen. More so, and the whole and the whole purpose of. Uh, are being there, according to what Ruby was trying to say, was we will affect the jury. Amen. And, and indeed, kind of thought, and I indeed, the jury, that. the jury was affected, and we have now found out that of the four charges that Mr. Hovind was charged with, three of them were not able to be uh, continued; they were dropped. There was one that's about seven or eight years old that was a contempt of court going way, way back, and they did find him 
guilty of that, but the people that are involved in this legally, like Ernie Land and so forth, are saying that that will not stand up under the appeals situation. So we are giving God the victory, another victory for Jesus and the good guy. Brother Charles, hang on just a minute. Is there anyone else on the line with us? Folks? All right, Hitchhiker, God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have James L. McCullough on with me. And James L. McCullough uh, and I are not only been very, very involved. Uh, James is a minister of the gospel known as the Hitchhiker. Hitchhikes all over the world. And uh, he has been on with us, going to be on with us again. Not able to be in the studio today. He's out hitchhiking somewhere. But uh, we're going to be going back. We just yesterday set up an opportunity for the hitchhiker and I to be, now after I come back from Israel, we're going to be boots on the ground, prayer in the air in Memphis, Tennessee, with my pastor, uh, James David Manning. Now, he will be there, and then James David Manning is leading in a special pastors and leaders conference on the 20th and the 21st. James and I will be there 17, 18, 19, prayer walking and prayer vigiling, boots on the ground, prayer in the air, not only for Kent Hovind, but for all of our nation and all of the things that are going on. And then, of course... Is that meeting open, that meeting open to the public, or is that just for pastors and clergy? It will be open to the public. And uh, I think that's the case. Uh, my pastor is in charge, so I don't want to circumvent, you know, what his leadership is. But it's my understanding it is primarily for pastors and leaders, but I don't think anyone will be uh, refused uh, to go. But we'll be, uh, there'll be more information forthcoming the first part of the week, and you can watch uh, James David Manning, uh, The Manning Report. You can also watch our show, although... Monday, I'll be en route uh, to Israel, and uh, I won't be back until uh, the 22nd. But that meeting in Memphis is the 20th and 21st. And I can tell you right now, I am holding a meeting, what I call a preparation prayer meeting, that will be held on the 17th, 18th, and 19th. 17th and 18th is the Shabbat. Sundown the 17th to sundown the 18th is what we call Shabbat Shalom. We will be on the ground, boots on the ground in Memphis. The hitchhiker who's on the line with us will be there not only as a prayer warrior, not only as a pastor, but as security because he's a licensed uh, security officer. And so he'll be there with me. 17, 18, and 19 is when we'll be there. 17 and 18 is Shabbat Shalom, Friday night to Saturday night. And then on Sunday, the 19th, we will be doing a Lord's Day prayer and fasting there in Memphis. And then on the 20th, on the 20th, my pastor, on the 20th of um, April, which is Monday, Hitchhiker and I and others and all of you, are, I can tell you right now, you're all welcome to the Shabbat Shalom. We're going to be doing Shabbat Shalom on Friday night to Saturday night, 17 and 18 of April. And 19, we'll be doing a Lord's Day uh, Resurrection Sunday and prayer for the event coming up on the 20th and 21st. And I would ask right now, if there's a church in Memphis that would like to invite us in the Lord's Day of the 19th. We will be glad to come to your church, pray with you, pray for you. But 1718, Friday and Saturday, Shabbat Shalom. And we'll be doing that. And uh, we'll go from there. And uh, we encourage all of you to be there for that. Uh, i got to holler at my tech here. Uh, I tried to get up and couldn't get up, so I went with the uh, iPad. So I'm on... I'm on the iPad, so, okay. so we'll, I'll just continue on this way. We'll get together later. All right, we were having a little technical difficulty, but I managed to adjust out of it, and we are live on the air. So, uh, Mr. Parker, are you back? 
He was on the road, so he may have lost phone signal. And I want to say thank you to Alan Parker. Uh, by the way, uh, you are invited. Not only you, but all folk are invited uh, for March 20th in Jerusalem. We will be at level P1, Kalau Building, 97 Jaffa Road, Jerusalem, Israel, March the 20th. And at 1218, at 1218 on the 20th, we will be at the Wailing Wall, and you can extrapolate that out. It's about nine hours difference between California and Jerusalem time. Uh, those in other time zones can adjust that accordingly. But I would encourage you, we will have a hitchhiker. Uh, you'll be here. I want the hitchhiker uh, to be sure on the 20th of March, I would ask you at, uh, we'll have to figure out the time zone. I don't know what it is right now. But I would ask you at the top of the hour uh, at 12 o'clock in Israel, to open up the prayer line, and you and I will work on that later and figure out what time to do that. And I want you to do that here in the United States while I'm in Jerusalem. And uh, James McCullough, the hitchhiker, will be doing that uh, for me. Uh, so James, put the 20th of March uh, on your calendar uh, to be able to set up the uh, prayer call, okay? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. James McCullough, ladies and gentlemen. James, tell us... Uh, whatever, what's on your heart and your mind today for prayer? I'm still praying for my, uh, my mother-in-law's family as we uh, continue to prepare to uh, uh, entomb her and everything. And uh, ladies, praying for my wife. Ladies and gentlemen, pray for the McCullough family, James's family. This was his mother-in-law very godly woman, and uh, she went home to be with the Lord a few days ago, and they're in the process now of going through that organizational workout that you have to do when someone passes away. And so pray for James, pray for his dear wife Martha, the daughter of this dear sweet lady. And so, uh, brother, we're praying with you and for you. Would you lead us in prayer for yourself, for your family, and for all of us? Thank you, James, Brother Hitchhiker. God bless you. Uh, like I said, James is a shamash uh, for me, a helper for me, preaches for me when I'm gone. And the fact of the matter is, uh, I will be uh, traveling uh, back on the 22nd, and uh, you watch the Wiley Drake Show or our services here. Brother Jim McCullough will be preaching on the 22nd at our 11 a.m. service here in Buena Park. It'll be on television. You'll hear him preach because I'll be prayer in the air. Literally, I'll be on an airplane flying back from the Holy Land here back into the U.S. Uh, around noonish on that time while Jim's preaching. I'll be 
prayer in the air for him. And I ask you to do the same thing. And I ask you to go to the WileyDrakeShow.com. The WileyDrakeShow.com. Our services are on every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. But before the 11 o'clock, there's a 945. One of my other Shamash men from our church, uh, Brother uh, Will Ruffin, will be teaching Sunday school on the 22nd. Uh, at 9.45, and Brother Jim will be bringing a message at 11. So pray for both of them and pray for us as we travel. Anyone else on the line? Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things we've had to... Oh, oh, here. oh, oh go ahead. Who is this, Charles? Louis Charles. Yeah. Water. Yes, I'm still here. All right. Well, we uh, one of the things that we have to say, folks, is, is that we can take a lot of callers on the line... But people have to, it's, a, it's an exercise in learning patience because um, I do a lot of talking, others do a lot of talking, and you just sort of got to wait and then forge your way in. So, brother, uh, your first name is Rudy? Me? Oh, I'm Louis Charles. I was speaking before. Okay, Mr. Charles. Mr. Charles, excuse me. What's your first name? Okay, Chuck. Well, it's Lewis Charles. Chuck, uh, we were talking about our trip to Israel. We're talking about our trip to Memphis. We're talking about our trip to uh, Washington, D.C. that's coming up. We've got a lot of things going on. We'll talk more about those a little later. But right now, we're also today uh, talking what I use the terminology of post-trial uh, comments. And that is, uh, we know that our dear friend Kent Hovine was very ungodly, very illegally charged, has spent over eight years in prison, and is still in prison as we speak. The trial was held. Uh, the verdicts have come in. Three of the four charges uh, were not chargeable, not able to proceed. But the one that goes back about seven or eight years, was called a federal contempt of court. And uh, the people that know the legal profession say that that will not hold up because there was no evidence in this trial uh, for that, and they feel certain that in the appeal that too will go away. But in the meantime, we have to pray for Kent Hovine, and that's what we're doing now. We're taking post-trial. This gentleman was encouraged to be there by others, he did go under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and by the encouragement of uh, uh, Rudy. Uh, do we have another caller on the line? Yes, Aaron in Texas. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hear now from uh, Team Hovine in Texas. Uh, we're talking to a lady who for the last two weeks uh, has been a widow. She's been at home at the home fires, but her husband, Rudy, has been boots on the ground in Pensacola. Therefore, uh, she has been widowed for the last couple of weeks. Uh, good morning, my sister. Is he home yet? Yes, sir, he's home. He got home about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Now he's uh, out and about fixing the truck and... Uh taking care of business. We got a computer completely hacked, attacked, and fried, and he's going to be working on that all day when he gets back. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Obama syndrome, my dear sister. When you fight the devil, the Bible says two things about fighting the devil like you and your husband have been. The Bible, not widely, but the Bible says two things happen. Number one is the devil must flee. And I was down in Pensacola there for the trial and standing with you and others, uh, boots on the ground, prayer in the air, and the devil fled. Uh, and they moved, they continued in court terms when the devil flees, it's called a continuance. And so they continued the trial uh, over to uh, the month of March, and uh, of course then I had to come home. But... There's two things the Bible says when we fight the devil. Number one, he flees. He has to. 
because it's an order from God. But another thing that God says, when you live righteous, when you serve the Lord as a man or a woman, as a lay person or a clergy or whatever it is, the Bible says you will. You it didn't say you might, you could, you will, you shall suffer persecution. And a part of Obama's persecution against me and against you are to have his hackers come into our computers and do damage and we have to correct it. And so in Jesus' name, we come against the hacker and uh, we pray for Rudy and for Aaron as they try to put things back together as simple as the pickup truck and as complicated as a computer. And uh, But ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, that's... Uh, that's just part and partial of being a good warrior and being in the battle. Aaron, what else would you share with us? Well, we talked to Ken over this morning. His spirits were very high. He's uh, positive thinking that he's going to walk out of there next week. Amen. Well, we certainly will agree with him in prayer and pray that next week Kent Hovine will be back with his family. His wife has been widowed for almost for over eight years. She's not had her husband because the government put him in jail for bogus, non-existent laws that they said he broke, and he did not. And the jury proved that almost completely, but it's still in the works. So continue to pray for uh, Pastor Kent Hovine, his family, his wife, for Brother Rudy and uh, his wife, Aaron, there at the Texas team, Hovine. Anything else you'd share with us, sister? That's it for now. We're just going to keep on fighting. Well, tell our listening audience, we may have new listeners today that have not been following the event, but tell them... If they would like to go and re- and watch and hear the audio portions of the reports that your dear husband has done, tell them how to do that, would you please? Sure, you can go to freekenhoven.com or you can go to the YouTube channel, Lone Star 1776. All right, go ahead and get that phone, sister. Thank you. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just go to Lone Star 1776 videos. That's the YouTube. And you can see the YouTube presentations live from Pensacola. Yes. Uh, Again, being that I had first-hand witness of everything that went on there, I have to say, Rudy and his wife, and really the the Holy Spirit came through their pastor, Pastor Phil Pott. Yes. Because you can see there were other people from that church there also from on the first Monday, and uh, also uh, in, in the trial. And I would have to say, there's no question about it that Rudy, Rudy Davis, if it wasn't for him being there, this jury would not have been affected. That's right. The people in the street wouldn't have been affected. And I was saying before that. One of the reasons the jury was affected, and they got the idea of learning how to nullify. Yeah. And it was a hung, I, I know there was hung jury on, on three of these counts because they were taught, because of the presence of the men in the street and a couple of women there too, they were taught that they have a right to nullify these charges if they think they are misapplied, even if they agree with the law, they're misapplied, or if they absolutely disagree with the law, and it's, it's silly. Yeah. And, and they learned that. There's no question in my mind because of what a couple of other men did. I have to give a notice to a gentleman named Joss, Joshua Jocelyn. Yes. He was out there with a, a microphone and a 40 amp, uh, 40 amp amplifier. And the people on the fifth floor, we were on the fifth floor of this building, we could hear him. So that means the jurors could hear him too. Amen. Yeah, I mean, all this stuff, I have to say the foundation of it was uh, Pastor Philpott and whatever effect he's having on his church. Amen. It's tremendously different than anyone else in this country. Amen. 
Well, we certainly uh, heard a lot of very positive scriptural, most of all, and personal encouragements from people like yourself, Chuck, and others that have met this pastor. It's not been my privilege to meet him, I don't think. Uh, it was my privilege to be down there in the early part of this thing before the devil ran and changed it. Uh, I was not able to go back for the actual trial that they finally held. But we heard a lot of great things from you and others uh, in reference to what Pastor Phil did and is still doing to lead his people. And by the way, let me just quickly hasten to say, ladies and gentlemen, if you're called for jury duty, the Bible says you're to answer that call. The Bible says you're to go and serve your duty as a jury person. The Bible also makes it very clear, I don't care what the judges say, I don't care what the attorneys say, the Bible says that it is your obligation to vote in that jury your conscience. I don't care what the judge says. The judge will tell you, no, you have to do what I tell you to do. Well, that's contrary to the Word of God. And when it comes down to the vote, you must answer to God for your vote. No matter the circumstances, no matter the judge, no matter the instructions, if you're in a court situation, you must vote the conscience that Almighty God gives you. And if that means going on along with the rest of the jury, fine. But if it means, no, I don't care how many other people on the jury say guilty, in my heart, my conscience says not guilty. And those jurors and that judge will try to get you to go along with them. Do not do that. Do not do that. You, as an individual human being, are created by God, and created by God means you have a conscience. Animals do not have that. You have that. And you, as an individual homo sapien, a human being, have an obligation to your Creator to vote your conscience not only in the polling place, not only in the voting booth, but if you're in a jury, it is your obligation to Almighty God to vote your conscience. Now, anything else, Chuck, you'd like to share? Um, I, would suggest, I would suggest that there, um, let's, uh, rather than focus on the top of it, let's look, I would like to take a look at the way the rank and file, the, the, the laity who were there, which I would be included in, because most of us were, were trying to, well, let's say most of us, there was about five or six of us when we went to uh, dinner or lunch together. And we were focusing on solutions. What, what are we going to come about? What are we going to come out of this with? Right. They, when they find uh, Mr. Holden guilty, and he goes back to jail, which really could end up being a life sentence, or if this judge gives him 20 years, even for the one count, it could in effect be a life sentence. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, or if, if he walks and he goes free, or anything in between. What of this? I mean, is it just going to be a one-time reactionary situation? And we're just going to ever be on call for the next situation to react at? Or are we as Christians going to start taking it a proactive way, uh, and we all agree that we have got to look for what I would buy term as the modern day version of the Black Road Regiment. Amen. We're going, to take past we're going to find pastors who are going to lead us in a proactive direction. We're not going to sit around and wait until they attack one of our servants, you know, one of our servants, mm. and, and put them in jail or beat him up or whatever, you know, find them in tax, whatever. There are a million different ways. To, to persecute. So are we going to wait for that to react, or are we going to go on the offense? 
Well, brother, I believe I believe the answer to that is I believe there are people like Chuck and others, laymen and pastors alike, that will be meeting and being proactive, and we're, that's what this scheduling is all about that we're doing. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But before we go any further, do we have another caller on the line with us? Ca- Okay, Aaron, what else would you like to share with our listening audience? Go right ahead. Uh, we really appreciate all the prayers coming from all over the world, and um, we really look forward to the uh, body of Christ waking up and getting active. Amen. Amen. Well, we have been active for the last three or four weeks. When I say we, me, you, Chuck, others. <laughs> We have been active, we've been boots on the ground, prayer in the air, and this, in my opinion, is why I put out the program, the schedule, called Scheduling by the Holy Spirit. I believe this Holbein case is part and parcel of the genesis, if you will, of this meeting that Dr. James David Manning, he, of course, interviewed uh, Mr. Holbein many times, Uh, And Dr. Manning is planning on a special meeting called I Am a Christian, America is a Christian Nation, and that's going to be on April the 20th and 21st in Memphis, Tennessee. And I believe this trial helped fuel that. And... uh, Just ahead of that, on the 17th, 18th, and 19th, I believe the Holy Spirit, through Aaron and Rudy and Chuck and others, have fueled myself as chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference, my security officer, hitchhiker, i.e. James McCullough, has fueled us and pushed us to do Shabbat Shalom on April uh, the 17th and 18th. And then the 19th for the Lord's Day of Prayer and Fasting for getting us more involved. And then on the 20th and 21st is when Dr. Manning is inviting all people to come to Memphis to stand. And then we're going to move on from there. Uh, another thing that was genesis by this is, is that we're going to be going to Washington, D.C. And we're going to be there to pray for the Supreme Court of the United States. And so uh, we're going to be there April 26th through May the 1st. And I believe this was fueled and helped start, started by this trial. We're going to be there April 26th through May the 1st. And on May the 1st, we're going to do May Day for Marriage. May Day for Marriage. And so there's a lot of things that are going on in the very, very near future. And uh, all you have to do, folks, if you want the schedule, is just send me an email, wileywiley at att.net, wileywiley at att.net, and put the schedule in there, and I'll give you the schedule that runs us all the way through uh, the month of April with events that are going on in Memphis, in Washington, D.C., in Texas, in Arkansas, in Oklahoma, and different places around the nation. So send me an email, wileywiley at att.net, and just ask for the schedule, and I'll give you that schedule uh, that's coming up. And I would encourage you to be involved wherever and whenever you can. All right, Aaron, anything else? Yeah, I'd like to add that normally on the 20th of April, uh, for the past many years, we've been at the Waco Memorial. Mm. Very good. And we'll be praying for that. I don't know if they're doing that again, uh, but we certainly... Every year, every year for 20, what is it, 21 years now? Mm, mm, my goodness, my goodness. Well, we'll certainly be praying for that. Now, that's on, that's on April 20th. Yeah, and you said Manning will be in... Uh, Memphis on the 20th? Yes, he'll be in Memphis. Okay, well, we'll have to pick one or the other, but I'm sure we'll be at one or the other. Amen. Well, uh, Dr. Manning has put together that uh, it's still in the formation uh, based on his experience in working down there with you guys with uh, Pastor Holbein, 
but he decided that he would put together the thought, the subject, I am a Christian, America is a Christian nation. They did not treat Kent Hobine like a Christian. They treated him like a, a, a fugitive. And we are a Christian nation. We should never have done that to him. And so Dr. Manning is calling for a meeting on April the 20th and 21st. April 20th. Do you know what the significance, you know what the significance of Memphis, Tennessee is? Uh, well, uh, only because of the American theme, and I, don't, I haven't talked further with Dr. Manning, but some of the significance is, of course, as you know, he's a black man. Memphis was very important. That's where Dr. Martin Luther King literally gave his life for American freedom. And uh, that, that's some of the significance. But Dr. Manning will be coming out with more of that uh, in the very near future. Okay, that's great. I just know that uh, every year that I've been at the Waco Memorial, there's a lot of strong Christians there. Amen, amen. Well, we can, uh, you know, we're going to be doing boots on the ground, prayer in the air. I'll be in Memphis with Dr. Manning, but we will have our prayer line open and we hope to hear from uh, my newest media representative at large, Rudy Davis. And if he's not in Memphis, he can hook up with us as he did from Pensacola as our media representative for the Congressional Prayer Conference. Great. All right. Anything else anyone would like to share? We only have about three minutes before this program's over. Before we go, though, I want to remind you that tonight at 5 o'clock California time, 7 o'clock Central time, 8 o'clock D.C. time, the Wiley Drake Show will be back on. But tonight is a very special show. We have with Wiley tonight Mr. Benghazi. Mr. Benghazi is a man by the name of Nakula Basila Nakula. He's the man that Thunder Thigh Hillary said was the cause of Benghazi, and Barack Hussein Obama said the cause of Benghazi was Nakula. They put him in prison for that, and uh, later had to admit that it wasn't him, his movie. It was indeed Barack Obama's favorite people, the Muslim Brotherhood, and so they had to re their statement that it was his fault and they did allow him to get out of jail but again our courts are so screwed up they put him on probation and uh, put him in a halfway house and he has now been uh, a probation person here at the First Southern Baptist Church in Messianic Fellowship he came here over a year ago he lives here he eats here and he fellowships here, and he is at our church as we speak tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time. Mr. Benghazi, Nakula Basila Nakula, will tell you his uh, story. I invited Hillary, but she said Bill was still mad at me. And so I invited President Obama and he sent me an email in response to my request asking for a donation to help him with the Obama health care mess. So, Mr. Nakula Basila Nakula will be here at 7 p.m. Central Time. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share or add? Now tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, that'll be 5 p.m. here in California. If you call in on the prayer line, you'll be able to ask Mr. Nakula Nakula, you'll be able to ask him a question. He's going to be telling his story of his incarceration and the fact that uh, he is indeed, if you go to Google and put his name in with my name, you'll find out that he is probationed to me here at the church. Anyone else have anything to share? All right. 
We're going to call it quits. This is a wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of stuff happening. A lot of things going on. Send me an email, wileywiley at att.net. That's W-I-L-E-Y, W-I-L-E-Y, wileywiley at att.net. Put the word schedule in. I will send you what I believe is scheduling by the Holy Spirit to help God's people implement 2 Chronicles 7.14. Call us tonight. Talk to Nakula. Talk to me. Share whatever you'd like to share. God bless you. We'll see you back here tonight.